All right, so this will be the first installment of uh, me putting the engine back together. I laid all the pistons out and rods separately. I have the piston, the first piston in the garage, so I can file down here uh, the rings and stuff. So I have all these laid out to the best that I can. I measured them, and it looks like this combination that I have is the best for each each weight. So I'm gonna start messing with the rings on the gap. So I got all the rings laid out, top, bottom, oil. Now I'm gonna throw them in each cylinder and I'm gonna measure the gap. So starting with the top ring on one, we're gonna follow this for this chart. So I'm gonna go with street moderate turbo. So your bore times five thousandths. So the bore of a 2J is 86 millimeters. Translate that to inches, that'll be 3.385. So 3.385, which is our bore, times five thousandths. And that gives us around 17 thousandths of an inch. So whenever you throw in your piston ring in, go about an inch down into your bore. So there's many different tools you could use. You can even use a roll of masking tape, a roll of tape. So I'll just use the piston itself. I'll go down to the bottom of the oil ring. Pull out. So your feeler gauge is here, 17 thousandths. We'll try with that. And it does not fit in. Let's see what it does. Just go down two, go to fifteenths, fifteen thousandths. It doesn't completely fit in the gap. Let's go to fourteen thousandths. No, not fourteen thousandths either. All right, regardless. Okay, so thirteen thousandths fits in the gap, so I need to go an additional four thousandths over. So in order to file your gap, you can either get the file, it has like a little hand crank on it, it looks like a little medieval torture kind of deal. But if you don't got that, you're going to just use a file and a vise. So while you're doing this, you, wanna, you don't want to put them together and just keep on going back and forth and waller them out. You want to keep one side as a reference because you want to make sure this is going to be perfectly square. Sorry. Together, perfectly flat. So you just do one side. And then once you're done with it, once you get your proper gap, you want to take another separate little hand file and take care of all these burrs. I had to file each one of the top rings, but I didn't show all that because that would have been redundant. Got one done. Moving on to the rest. All right, so I'm going to move on to the second one. Moving on down to number three. All right, we're going to mess with number four. All right, all the top ring is done. Working on the second ring. Per the chart, the board times so 55 ten thousandths. It, it would be a little bit over uh, 18 thousandths. We're going to aim for that, a little bit over 18 thousandths. It's good to go there. Working on three. Cylinder four. Five. Alrighty. Working on the oil rings now. I'm going for five thousandths. Well, in preparation for me throwing these uh, pistons in here, a new shop cloth, some ATF. I already did this once I received the engine from the machine shop, but that was back in July. It's been in a bag since, but let's see if we can clean this up a little bit more. Oh, yeah. My sauce. Okay, all the rings are good to go. I just got to throw them in each piston. You want to have your top and second to be completely apart from each other, 180. So in regards to installing your piston rings on your piston, you can either do it by hand, but you run a risk of actually scratching the side of your piston and or the crown, or you could just use that little circlip kind of tool that I got there. They make a super fancy one, but this one did just fine.
Well, I picked this up a couple years ago, this red line assembly lube, and this stuff is awesome, period. Got the first piston all lined up and everything because the JE don't really have an indication. It must have wore off. Here's the front of your piston, this little front indicator. There are those notches there because you see in the, the aft end. That's just like broke the weight. There's no indicator. And then you want this to be in the exhaust side, if you will. So it'll be like that. So if this is the front, this will be the exhaust side with your, your oil hole right there. In the front of the piston, you'll have this groove on the intake side. So if you notice that 2000 grit that's right next to me, I had to use that to get rid of some of the burrs, whatever the wrist pin rides on the connecting rod. So just be wary whenever you buy used items that that might be a thing you got to worry about. All right, so now I'm going to work on the crank, get her all nice and clean, all the bearing surfaces prepped. Okay, I'm going to take off all these caps, throw out all the old bolts, throw in the studs. So I installed all the bearings, dropped the crank in. I did not install any lube, so now I'm going to put some plastic gauge on each journal, all the caps with the new bearings, torque it all down, and then I'm going to measure how much the plastic gauge is squished. Okay, so I'm going to torque all the caps down and measure the oil clearance. Okay, then you want to take your measurement. They give you this little chart right here. Okay, get a clean plastic gauge, plastic scraper. Really though, using anything non-ferrous to clean up that plastic gauge is paramount, even plastic like I used. Because you don't want to be ruining your, your crank journals just because you want to take off that plastic gauge. And don't forget about cleaning up your main caps as well. So for final preparation, I'm saucing up all the caps here and the journals with that Redline assembly lubricant. I'm using a little too much, but that's fine. Better to use too much or too little. You can use engine oil, but it doesn't hold up as well whenever you are initially starting your engine. Yes, you're supposed to prime your system, but just in the event that you accidentally dry fire it, you'll be okay with this red line stuff. Okay, 
Okay, now it's time to put all the uh, studs in, lube in both ends of the threads. So if you guys saw my previous short block update video, I actually had to break the torque on all these nuts, take an Allen bit, and cinch these down, and of course back off and then hand tight at that point because they weren't going down far enough due to the fact that I neglected the step to chase the threads. So make sure you're chasing your threads and your block whenever you're installing your new studs. So they tell you to lubricate all these with the dump some of that sauce in there, just like that. So let's recommend 60 foot pounds and three equal steps up to that point. So we'll ramp it up, we'll do 20, 40, and 60. Okay, studs, caps, crank installed. Flip her over, throw the pistons in. That's what JE recommends. Yeah, boy.